This week on the Business Agility Podcast, we're bringing you part two of two with special guest host, Alexis Williams. Alexis is the general manager overseeing the Accenture partnership at Atlassian. Alexis, tell us a bit about what we'll hear this week. In this second episode, our guests dive deeper into the evolution of enterprise agile transformations and practices from key signs of a healthy transformation culture today to a holistic five-year outlook on full business agile adoption. What do you see as sort of the tipping point with customers as far as like really true readiness to embark on enterprise agility sort of transformation? It's true executive engagement. The executives themselves have to transform in their way of leadership, decisioning, uh, funding of the, and governance of the organizations in order to enable this new way of working beyond an initial um, IT group for the yeah. whole business. We're also seeing certain catalysts like lean portfolio management as organizations started to advance in their delivery um, of agile especially on the software side it started to even highlight more the uh, the, the the bottleneck that the traditional uh, governance and funding structures pose so lean portfolio management has been gaining so much traction in our market one of our indicators actually is the lean portfolio management course we never built it for growth it is our highest growing course it's generating uh, actual transformations that are being triggered and starting to get evolved. So that's beginning to engage those same executives, but in a different capacity, not only how you behave and support, et cetera, but now how do you on a day-to-day -day basis make investment decisions that support that agility? So it's all starting to come together. Um, I know, John, we had a good conversation on LPM. Yeah, and coming back to behaviors, I think engaging the folks that do that for their everyday jobs, mm -hmm. um, trying to, agility might not be a word that's top of mind, for them, but what we've seen is when we do have high-performing teams demonstrating tremendous agility at that team layer, they could be a local optimization mm -hmm. unless we're able to engage some new behaviors mm -hmm. up there at the higher levels yeah. as well. So to bring that in, you know, this is where it really starts to come together and, and you, you truly start to see some value starting mm -hmm. to get faster, mm -hmm. right? But what does fast look like? It, it takes this coherent picture that Scaled Agile is able to put out there in the big picture. You can do some of it if you don't get all of it moving. It doesn't come together, and we hear that again and again as well. It is connecting that full system, right? It is people, it is process, it is data, it is systems, tools. Everything needs to work together, and pulling it together almost flawlessly. You're, you're, you're orchestrating a symphony. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, absolutely. Tracy? The yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. A lot of the um, principles and frameworks you know, tied to enterprise agility, they're so heavily dependent on the tooling side of things. So we haven't touched too much on this, on this, but what's your perspective on tooling as it relates to enterprise agility? It's a critical component. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you. It should not be the sole focus. It, the tooling alone will, will, will not stand in a, in a complex change journey, but uh, you also need for that journey visibility. Mm -hmm. You need data and intel to make, to make better insight-driven decisions. When we talk about lean portfolio management, it's entirely about decisioning. Decisioning, trade-offs, data, data-based, and being able to understand the, your, your organization's capability to deliver and how it connects to your strategy. You mentioned connecting strategy to execution. Mm -hmm. In SAFE, we talk about strategic themes being tied to OKRs. Mm -hmm right? Quantified business outcomes that you can see and forecast and, and, and uh, being to evaluate how you're progressing against those outcomes. Those are critical for the whole system for enterprise agility. We may not have worried about those in the days when we were launching an agile team, right? A scrum team. But now with enterprise agility, the, the stakes are higher. You know, we did some research. It just reminds me um, at, at Accenture and have, have com continued to repeat this research where we, we've come up with a, a frame called the net better off. And, and we've seen that there are six dimensions where people feel that they're left net better off by their employer, by their uh, leadership team, et cetera. And it's interesting because, and, and again, we've repeated the survey and it comes up the exact same things. You would imagine like the financial, right? Um, you know, I feel safe in the environment in which I'm working, but every single time also the tools come up. I need and I have the right tools to do my job. I have the right skills to do my job. I have the right autonomy at all to do my job. And I feel as though, 
maybe the enterprise agility word isn't inside of this research, but it's exactly the same, kind of the same thing that you're talking about. They're critical and crucial. And it's not a matter of number of tools. As a matter of fact, that's a detractor. Yeah. You actually, at that level, you you need visibility rolling up all the way from the ground level up. So you need consolidation. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very common, actually, in, in most lean portfolio management journeys to start to come up with a unified tool set mm-hmm. that starts to bring that different data. There's different schools of thought on that. I I think at the end of the day, the tools influence how you see the world. Mm -hmm. And I think a big part of what we hear and the scaled agile take the lead on is you want to see things maybe differently than before, right? There was a day when we looked at our work and we didn't see backlogs. We didn't see flow, right? Mm -hmm. But now more and more we're trying to see flow and we're trying to see flow at scale. And the tools have a role to play in, in showing you your world you know, reflecting it back to you in a way that you can do meaningful things. Mm-hmm. They're only going to be as good as you make them, as sure. you configure them. And, and the new challenge is there's, if you look at the big picture today, there's so many roles, so many jobs, people doing different things coming together. There is a need for different tools out there. So the dream of having that single tool to implement the big picture, at Atlassian, we've kind of given up on that. <laughs> and we're saying, look, you have every right to go out and find the best tool for the job, um, but let's work on making it a seamless experience and make sure that when you talk about the things keeping you from flowing that value, the tools aren't coming up on that list anymore. It's interesting. I hear this a lot as well, too. We we, we maybe want mul- multiple tools, but I need to know which tools. And I hear this a lot from clients, which tools to use when. We've got so many tools. I'm so overwhelmed. And so I think, you know, back to your point, we talk a lot about how do we integrate them in the flow of work. Yeah. And, and this is a whole other conversation. It but, is probably but, right. But the perspective <laughs> of somebody leading IT and looking at that number and, and trying to manage costs on that yeah. is very different than I have one role to play. And yeah. I only interact with a handful of tools, and I want them to be the best I can yeah. find. So yeah. there's a little bit of a conflict there. Yeah. I'm just curious as well. I talk to a lot of clients about you know where executives, where does this sponsorship sit, and who and where, and at what level, and what parts of the organization, and what are you seeing as some of the best practices when you do think about this sponsorship or this executive uh, leadership? So it's interesting with Agile kind of starting on the software side of the house from years ago, it was traditionally rolling up to the CIO. And most Lean Agile Centers of Excellence were reporting up to the CIO's organization. And that was the the focus area. And and they made great gains, right? Introducing team agility, uh, program agility, et cetera. We're starting to see a pattern that quite frankly, we're learning more from you now from the market and trying to embrace and synthesize it into patterns. But we're starting to see uh, business-led transformations. Mm -hmm. We're starting to see digital transformations led from the COO, CFO, right? Um, Even CEO office at at times. Um, That that opens up a whole different area that you heard us talk about during launch of we're really interested in what is really safe beyond IT. We recognize it's complex. There's a lot of unknowns. It's emerging. So we decided we're going to take the uh, approach of collecting patterns, actually going out there. Oh, you're doing Agile HR uh, to transform your compensation and talent development. You're doing marketing. uh, You're engaging finance directly into the arts in a different way. So we're actually observing, collecting those patterns, identifying success patterns that are repeating and starting to synthesize them into those business agility experience reports that we published recently. Yeah, Yeah. it's it's truly exciting. I'm seeing the same. So I really appreciate that because I'm seeing the same and I feel what, and it's really bringing businesses together and Mm -hmm. business leaders together around common goal, whether it's, you know, the practices or whatever it is, but it is HR and operations and finance and not just IT, it might be IT led or sponsored, right. but you've got everyone else in the room because when we think about skills and behaviors, who's gonna run with those across the organization and also CEO sponsored is is critical. So I, I, I so appreciate you're seeing that. So so are we. I guess speaking of executive sponsorship, what is that? What does true executive sponsorship look like? Is it funding projects or, or the transformation itself? Is it what level of engagement and what are the key ingredients to true executive sponsorship that we should be looking for from our customers as far as the readiness? Well, executives themselves start with themselves, with their behavior, right? Model the behaviors you want others to emulate. There are traits and characteristics and, and recommended behaviors and patterns in a, for a lean agile leader, yeah. right? So they start with themselves, and then they'll have to open their wallets and fund the transformation itself. I would add invest in the people. I, I and think invest in the people. At the end yeah. of the day, the executives are supposed to be about people development. So 
Put the money on the table, absolutely. But then also remind themselves that it, it's about helping these people get the new behaviors, get the new mindsets. Yeah. And that starts a lot of times with vocabulary, right? So if the people at the top are talking about the flow of value, mm -hmm. let's be honest, that's a big shift. It is. And when people all across the organization pick up on the leaders with some new vocabulary, it's noticed. Mm -hmm. There's another word I would throw in here as well, too, is at the most senior leadership level, creating that autonomy as well. So there's this empowerment of definitely putting money at it, right? Getting the right organizational roles and people in place, but creating the autonomy. Right. And, I, you know, you can also be very, very top down and very breathing down the neck and da, 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 da. So does it really create the agile behavior? It just creates a, an additional level of stress that I've that I've also seen. Right. Autonomy, yeah. empowerment, decentralized empowerment. decisioning. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. So thinking about enterprise agility, what are the biggest misconceptions people have about enterprise agility? In, in some instances, not all organizations, uh, they may have had a proven success pattern when, within their IT or their uh, software delivery, and they want to take the same exact pattern, the same recipe, and apply it to the rest of the organization. And um, it doesn't behave that way. It doesn't behave that way, right? Turning every every group of people as a scrum team or an agile team in your organization, whether they're sitting in HR or business operations, is not necessarily the answer. Another misconception, it's that example. It's all about turning people into those teams. There's a lot more to agility. Yeah, I'd be curious. I, I think it's probably underestimating how much of a people issue yeah. it really comes down to be. Mm. And, and that idea, if I want to enable enterprise agility, the thought of, well, how do I have to empower my people to get there? Do you have some thoughts? How do I bring them along? You know, you hear, well, we, we're not agile. We're going to do some agile training. We need some coaching. But it, and it's just and back to, we'll do some coaching, and then we go right back to our jobs. Wait, do you really understand? So we're on a journey. Everyone's on a journey right now. And I know you and I were talking a little bit about kind of just future ways of working and the future of work and, and what feels like sometimes a big experiment. Um, I don't want to call it an experiment in this sense as well, too. But in everyone is moving so incredibly fast. Fast. And I'm also seeing still the thought process of we've got to roll this technical, this technology implementation out, whatever it is. We've got to transform HR and we got to do it so fast. We got to do it so, so fast. And we've got to do it agilely. But they're still in, I, I see it every day in waterfall. And, and then everybody gets confused. And I think a lot of coaches are needed. Yeah. I love the role that I get to play with the C suite a lot of times as well, too, because it's got to start, in my opinion at that level. And because again, if they're not there, they don't have to say the words because to your point, sometimes we take words off of PowerPoint slides just because it throws people up and it really confuses them. But if I can get the leadership team to align, to embrace, to speak it and to speak it um, calmly and yeah. not in a stressed- It's the art of change, right? It, it, yeah. You're brilliant. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Keeping it calm while things are going crazy, yeah. I think domain expertise also matters at this point because mm -hmm. we are mm -hmm. extending the reach. We are going into areas that, that is beyond mm -hmm. traditional. Um, so if, if you're going to be helping transform HR, you need to have expertise in That's HR. Right. So yeah. it's not just a lot of coaches. It's a lot of uh, deep, right. knowledgeable, Great experienced point. coaches in that domain, sometimes in that industry, or experience how to do it within a regulated environment. So that that level of complexity starts to play in, in, in the type of partnering and advisory that, that's um, that's needed and to, to reach real and That's a really journey. good point. And by the way, that builds trust also. Yeah. So if you don't understand my business, and if you're coming in with, you know, you, how could you help me along this journey? How will right, it just so that level of trust that don't that's a great one the domain knowledge yeah, and the level of empathy required. Yeah, yeah. The coach yeah. coming into something yeah. they don't know the environment and then somebody trusting that the coach has something to offer. Yeah. That's um, that gets again back to the human system. Yeah. So we got to tweak a bit. Yeah. So fast forward, you know, mm. to the future, right? <laughs> what do you think and what do you see as the potentially biggest mm. change or you know movement within enterprise agility space five years from now? So we're already starting to explore it, right? Not, not that we know the answers, but we're starting to really experiment and explore and observe. Uh, what does it really mean beyond IT, yeah. beyond software? Uh, for one thing, digital transformations are no longer a software game. We're seeing people involved in digital transformations from across the business. Now, how much and how deep and in what way, that's what we're researching right now. <laughs> Yeah, and I think we just talked about vocabulary. I think the other thing we've heard multiple times just this week is when you do reach away from IT, away from software, they want to talk about the same things, but they might want to not hear the same terms. Mm -hmm. Maybe agile isn't the way they want to hear no. it. 
maybe backlog and Kanban, all these Japanese words, isn't something they really want to be hearing about. So, so I think we have to be super sensitive that it's the concepts, it's the principles that we're trying to bring in. And maybe the voicing on all that has to be radically different. So the listening that Scaled Agile mm -hmm. is so good at is going to be really crucial. Some of the interviews we've been conducting with, with business-led transformations, because again, to us, this is fascinating, reinforces exactly what you said. They're, they're outcome focused. Agile and safe are the vehicle to get there. It is never the goal. So what is our business outcome? How are we hyper-focused on it? And how do we get there? And then from there, they start to design all that is needed um, for that journey. And the clarity of that outcome is so critical. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so glad that you referenced that. I feel like it's just, you see that a lot. We got to go do X, do we want to do Y, whatever it is, but why? back to Y. What are the outcomes? What are we really trying to achieve here? If that isn't an anchor in here, I'm sure you guys have all seen this as well too, just there is so the ability to just lose sight, lose track, miss deadlines, that it just, but the outcome is so crucial. Well, and that yeah. brings up another great role of the senior leader is to almost pontificate, right? They have to speak again and again, the why. Yeah. It's not once, mm -hmm. it's not yeah. twice, it's consistently so that the right. message is heard throughout. It's almost like then you've embodied a purpose, right? And everybody understands, this is why I'm here and this is what we're doing and how we're all anchored into it. And I have a role it. in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love it, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And we touched on this a little bit earlier, but uh, you know, I've heard so much this week in keynotes and customer meetings, just how critical it is to have the right partner involved. From mm -hmm. your perspective, why is it, it just so important that customers do part, have partners to, to when they're going through these journeys? So it's funny that I have both Tracy and John sitting <laughs> yeah. next to me synthesizing the answer to this. But yeah. in, in reality, you, you need a very strong, trusted advisor that has been through this, that sees the patterns and has experienced them in other organizations, similar industries, perhaps some kind of vertical uh, specialization, that they can bring you the right approach. Safe at the end of the day, with our learning, is a framework it gives you the concepts, the, the, the mindset, the practice tips, but the application is never identical. It's never linear. Yes, we give you as much support as possible, but it's with the understanding that you still need a really experienced partner. Mm -hmm. And once we moved past team agility and program agility and art agility, now you're getting into portfolio, uh, value stream, et cetera it's a much higher stakes game. Mm. Yeah, and the, the patterns that you mentioned, they, they will come, but they're not there yet. And that's why experience, it really is crucial right now. Having some, every context is gonna be different. Mm -hmm. So having somebody that can help it, come in and aid you with their wealth of experience, looking at several different contexts. When you're getting started on this, if you, you don't know what you don't know. Yes. So finding that person that come in and say, I've done this 10 times and, you know, can't say that there's patterns yet, but boy, I think I can I can lend a hand in understanding how to make the best of your situation. Yes, that's the process side, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. then there's also the change side, the people side. That requires a lot of expertise. You cannot go at a complex change journey just with the technical side, Yeah. right? I've definitely seen, it's a really important point, very near and dear to my heart, and I've seen so many of the projects actually just honestly explode or implode on, on, on themselves and leadership kind of pitting against leadership, et cetera. And the level of, which we've spoken about, trust in an organization yeah. that can be eroded if the alignment and the people and, and bringing everybody along, helping them understand the why. I've had so many conversations lately and it's a simple, simple question. Tell me why, let's, let's get to the why here. And just this level of strain and stress in the system when we haven't brought forward and thought about people um, and kept up at the center and the heart, it's, it, it's a challenge. So I, I, I love that you, you mentioned that. Yeah. You're dealing with the most complex system, the human system. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Excellent point. And Tracy, from your perspective, I mean, you see this day in and day out. What do you think is the most important thing to really help? And how are you helping your customers create that trust within each other? I mean, Accenture is very strong in this area. So how do you look at going about building that trust for your customers? Yeah, it's such a good question. And it, it, it's um, there's all kinds of equations and things that you can look at with, with trust. But it, it and it's... I feel like it's a little bit different with each client that we talk about, but and it isn't it isn't doesn't come overnight. It's earned, you know. And in many cases, you know, I'm 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 watching, you know, a CIO with a mandate moving very fast, whatever it may be, moving, you know, creating a platform, moving from one technology to another. Mandate, gotta go, gotta go. And then there's doubts and there's questions and all of the other business leaders because those leaders weren't brought along the journey as well. Yeah. And now the people are saying it's being done to me, etc. And just 
They say they're agile. They've got to move fast. They've got to deliver. They've got to get it out there. Budgets, quarters, et cetera, et cetera. But this level of trust in the system then becomes just a, a, an incredible problem. So for me, I'm going to say, and I think I mentioned it earlier, it's the people have got to stay from the very beginning. They've got to be right there, yeah. bring everybody along that change journey and that change curve. I think it's so important. I, I, I love kind of going back and forth with you on the leadership sponsorship. I also see that when a CEO is sponsoring or at least basically, you know, in the in the boat with whatever's going on, it's so smooth because they're all looking to that leader, um, you know, are, are, is this aligned to the strategy as well too. Yeah. So there's trust in the system and there's of course trust with partners that we have to continue to build, but I see almost the trust in the inside of the organization eroding at times without some of us saying, let's take a step back. The partner concept, right? Because we can take and be very objective mm-hmm. when they're so very emotional mm-hmm. about what's happening and the strain and the stress. And I personally think it's also where a partner comes in and plays a, a very important role. Yeah, I love what you said, that trust has to be earned. And I think yeah. we've seen our language evolve too around this. It's now it's a journey. Now it's, we need to evolve. We need to inspect and adapt. It, it's an admission of you know, the humility that we don't know where, we don't know the answers, Correct. but we need the collaboration across all those functional silos to come together to find the answers. Correct. And that's good leadership. Yeah. I mean, that's what that is. So, mm-hmm. so I think, I think we've, we've seen that this way, you know, everybody acknowledges it's not a silver bullet. Mm-hmm. What replaces that? Well, great leadership with tremendous collaboration, right? And I, and I love that you started to bring in the, the, the leadership dynamic and the stress they're feeling. Part of it's part of the need to your earlier question for for a strong partner mm-hmm. is building those leadership teams, right? There, it's it's no longer about taking this one senior leader and mentoring them. It's taking a, a team of right. leader peers and teaching them how to navigate all of this complexity as a team to weather the storm together. That's really hard too. That is very hard, <laughs> especially with compensation systems, which brings in agile HR. I mean, yeah. there's there's so many factors that play well, in this Well, Leaders recipe. thinking of themselves as part of a team is much more foreign than you think when you first come into the conversation. Yes. Team, we take it for granted, I think, as we're coming up through the ranks, mm-hmm. but by the time you're a leader, to think of yourself as part of a team, that takes more conversations than you might think. Yeah. Yeah, I think, the, and fear, we've talked about this as well, too. So I watch this a lot where as part of the team, like we, we bring the team, the leadership team together, but ultimately just this fear of, I don't really know what I'm talking about, the leader, right? And my CEO was basically saying, I'm part of this team now and I've got to be the expert in, and it's just, it just spirals. But this, and then this level of anxiety, even in the leadership team. It necessitates that safety that we were talking yeah. about earlier, that's the human system. Yeah. You know, there's a certain amount of, of trust and safety that's required right. for the human system to actually pull this off. That's right, exactly yeah. right. Thanks to our partners at Atlassian and Accenture for sitting down with us at the 2022 Safe Summit in Denver. And a special thanks to Alexis Williams of Atlassian for hosting the discussion. We look forward to seeing you next year at the 2023 Safe Summit in Nashville, Tennessee. Until next time, stay safe.